All right, guys, what's growing on? So I'm making another video with Ken while he's here today, and I think this video is an awesome topic. You know how I like to talk about beneficiary, predatory insects in, a, in an ecosystem, how I really like to promote that polyculture. That's what we're gonna kind of focus on here with this video. Ken's gonna give you guys a little bit of knowledge. Hold tight. Another day of geeking out on bugs, huh? I actually find bugs to be rather fascinating, but I'm <laughs> always bugging somebody about them, so. Um, there was a video that you did recently, of course, that I mentioned to you that I found to be really fascinating, and that's the one on the property that you've been doing in LaBelle and the diversity of all the different plants there. And in California and other states, I work in a number of different types of both organic, sustainable, which I prefer sustainable because I'd rather everybody think in terms of using least amount of insecticides because part of the problem is we're actually dealing with a bug crisis but it's a little bit different bug crisis than what most people understand. See, many years ago, you'd be driving down the road to go to your favorite vacation spot and a whole bunch of things would splatter on your windshield. Have you noticed in recent years, your windshield's not getting splattered like it used to? Well, a lot of those bugs, in order for there to be a little bunny rabbit out in the field, there has to be so many million bugs that exist, so many organisms below them that exist. And so, when we just say we don't like bugs and we kill off all the bugs, we don't really stop and look at the fact that nature put together this really great balance of bugs. For instance, everybody loves a butterfly, all right, because it's beautiful. Well, a moth is a member of the same family and doesn't quite get the same rap, all right. But out there for every insect that all of the different, especially those of you who enjoy gardening, you know you've got aphids, scale, mealybugs, psyllids, mites, good mites, bad mites, and all kinds of things that are going on out there. There are, and we're not gonna go into the Latin words, there's the piercing, sucking insects, and the chewing insects. So let's just break it down into those broad groups. I'm either gonna eat what you're growing and your plants, or I'm going to suck the life out of them and create sugars and enable the ants. And that's where the ants come in. The ants are the enablers because they protect the bad actors. The bad actors are the characters to go and damage the different things that we're growing or that are naturally growing in the environment, okay? We want to manipulate the environment. The difference is thinking in a biorational way of how to manipulate. We already have the tools, like ladybugs, all right? Ladybugs as larvae look like little alligators. Well, in their larvae stage, many ladybugs eat thousands of aphids, which are plant damaging, piercing, sucking insects. And there's nine or 10 different types of positive biological predators available to eat every bad insect that shows up everywhere. That's the way it's all created, to create balance. Now, when we're growing things, we know that when we do monocrops, meaning you got acres and acres and acres of the same plant or tree, what you're dealing with is you're dealing with a situation where there's not a variety of different plants growing together because there's symbiosis between plants as well. Somebody's blooming when someone's not, someone's doing this, it keeps the good bugs there to keep the bad bugs out. Simplest way I know to put it. So, Monocrops demand a lot of chemicals. We've found in a lot of cases in organic monocrops that if we have four to six percent farmscaping of flowering natural plants that are drought tolerant, and we maintain predators, a wide diverse variety of predators like lacewings, lady beetles of several kinds, um, a whole different predatory mites, other insects that there's this ability to keep these predators on the property all the time by having a variety of different plants and things that are growing, similar to what Pete does and what I witness in his videos, which I mentioned the LaBelle one recently. He had a balance of things. There, there's different plants, let's say milkweed or, or a podocarpus. There are aphids and mealybugs and psyllids and all these piercing, sucking, chewing insects will, that will only live on one type of plant. So if you plant that plant and you wanna have 10 good plants with it, you're gonna be able to keep predators feeding at that plant for when you need them on the good plants that you're growing stuff. It's just a simple logical thing. We still get to manipulate nature, but at the same time, we're not destroying it 
and we're bringing back the books. That's what this is about today. So when you see things like what Pete's doing out there, he's putting all kinds of biodiversity back together from the soil on up. And all of the different things that are in combination are bringing these insects so that they're going to take care of the problem and the insecticide equation is not necessary. If you're going to fight a battle, you're not just gonna have frontline troops and just lady beetles. Classic biological pest control, they keep saying, go buy some of this or go buy some lace wings or buy some beetles. You wanna have several different types of predatory insects constantly on board doing the job. And so that's why having the diversity and having the little butterfly garden next to the other thing with natural flowering plants, but looking for different plants that have insects that are strictly feeders on those plants will bring a wide variety of predators to stay on your property all the time. I had them so bad in my citrus down in Nokomis, and I don't have a problem with the psyllid because all of my predators eat the psyllid nymphs before they get to their growth stage. The adult psyllid only creates about 4% of the damage. So if you've got spiders, which are great, in your trees and plants, there are lots of little spiders that are predators that work 24 seven, they don't charge you anything. And then there's the flying ones. The other thing is a lot of predators as larvae and in, the, in their growing stage feed on these insects, but as adults, as adults are, are pollinators. So nature is giving you a retirement plan where you're not running around the track like a greyhound, you're actually pollinating as adult and you're feeding on all the proteins you need as a, as a youngster. So having that diversity and the kinds of plantings that Pete does with the things that I see, those are the little things I thought should be mentioned because basically what the ants do, the ants protect the homopterans and the aphid, which are the aphid scale mealybugs and the lipidopterans, which are the larvae, the caterpillars and everything else. They protect them because there's a symbiosis and a mutualism. They give them sugars in exchange and food for a deal to protect them. It's a protection racket, okay? So when an aphid feeds on a plant, 99% coming out its rear end is sugary material with amino, amino acids to make a growing ant happy. So I think I pretty much vented it, Pete. Any questions? No, I love it. Oh, good. Symbiotic relationships in the garden. We need more of these. Be nice to your bugs. That's it. We should have a bug day. Plant more natives. Yeah. <laughs> Kill ants. Kill ants. Oh, all right guys, always appreciate Ken coming out here, dropping some knowledge. I hope you guys enjoyed that video. I'm gonna let him get back down into Comus. I need to get back to work. I hope you guys got some knowledge points out of this one. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit that like button. If you haven't subscribed yet, please go ahead and do so. Most importantly, we like to kill ants and pound dirt.